On today's show, Ford teams with India's Mahindra to develop SUVs in a small EV. One of Scion's castaways gets a new look and a new name, and automakers fight to protect their IPs, and it has nothing to do with interiors. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Ford is hoping to establish a greater foothold in India and other emerging markets. It just signed an agreement with Mahindra, India's largest automaker, to develop SUVs and a small EV. One of the SUVs will be a mid-size vehicle built on a Mahindra platform and sold independently by both companies as separate brands. The two will also develop a small SUV and electric vehicle, share powertrains, and develop connected car solutions for customers. The plan is to work together for up to three years. Nissan revealed details about its EV strategy. It's aiming to sell 1 million electrified vehicles annually by 2022 and will develop eight new pure electrics, including a global crossover based on the IMX concept. Starting in 2021, Infiniti will add electrified vehicles to its lineup. Nissan expects that by 2025, half of its sales in Japan and Europe will be electrics, in the U.S. it will be 20 to 30 percent, and China will reach as high as 40 percent. And Infiniti expects half of its sales will be electrified vehicles by 2025. In addition to the EV news, Nissan said it plans to offer autonomous technology in 20 models in 20 markets, and it will add connectivity to all Nissan, Infiniti, and Datsun models in key markets by 2022. And in other EV news, BMW says it won't start producing electrics in large numbers until 2020 because its current technology isn't profitable enough to scale up for mass production. Reuters reports that the company is working on making the technology more modular and scalable so it can build them in large numbers. It's also developed a new manufacturing technique that will allow it to build all of its models with a pure electric, a hybrid, or an internal combustion engine powertrain. Sounds to us like a modular architecture. BMW plans to add 25 electrified vehicles, including 12 BEVs to its lineup by 2025. And still to come, Toyota introduces a hatchback version of the Corolla. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Remember not that long ago when Scion went away? The brand's remaining vehicles were absorbed by Toyota, with one of them, the IM, getting rebranded as the Corolla IM. And now with an all-new model comes an all-new name, the Corolla Hatchback. It rides on Toyota's new global architecture and is longer, wider, and lower than the outgoing model. You'll notice a similar look in the front and rear lighting with a sharp inward kick down and the automaker's signature hexagonal grille up front. The Corolla Hatchback comes standard with an 8-inch touchscreen, which features Toyota's Entune 3.0 audio system. Under the hood, a new 2-liter 4-cylinder engine replaces a 1.8-liter unit, but it's actually smaller in size and lighter than the 1.8-liter. It gets mated to a 6-speed manual transmission, or Toyota's new CVT that we talked about the other day that has a launch gear. The new Corolla hatchback will make its debut at the New York Auto Show and then go on sale this summer. The fatal accident involving Uber's self-driving car earlier this week demonstrated that the technology still needs more refinement. And one area that needs improvement is driving in the fog. Most imaging systems get confused because the light reflecting off water droplets in the fog makes it impossible for the system to discern objects in the road. That's why researchers at MIT have developed a new imaging system that can gauge the distance of objects in fog and see through fog that humans can't. To test its system, the researchers placed objects in an enclosed box and then gradually filled it with thick fog. Outside pointing into the box is a laser that fires pulses of light into the fog, and a camera measures the time it takes for the reflection to return. 
As you can see in the video, the system is still able to recognize the objects in the box, even after they're not discernible to the human eye. And it's technology like this that will help autonomous cars operate safely in the future. You know, but there's a shortage of engineers developing this new technology. And coming up next, we'll tell you why this is causing a lot of fighting behind the scenes in the auto industry. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. There's a lot of fighting going on behind the scenes in the auto industry over the patents, the trade secrets, and the intellectual property that backs up all the new technology being developed. But one of the reasons why this is happening is there isn't enough talent to go around. On AutoLine This Week, our panel of experts discussed the need for more engineers. I'd be reticent if I didn't bring up talent and the war on talent, because right now we are all trying to fill spots where today we just don't have enough uh, human, human power be it cybersecurity, be it uh, uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence, there's only so much talent going around and that talent is circulating. So how to protect then what that talent produces in one company when they go to the next, either with non-competes or some clarity into that electronic footprint, it, it's gonna become more difficult. And I think companies are gonna have to really stand up and start taking a look at when somebody announces they're leaving, what kinds of due diligence needs to be done on their computer, et cetera, and they can do it to see if they copied and pasted or what they put on a hard drive that they're taking with them. To, to what Carla just said about talent, in fact, uh, there was just a story published the other day, a uh, report, I think uh, there, someone estimated that for particularly in the area of artificial intelligence, which is a key component of, of uh, developing these autonomous systems, uh, they estimated that there's only about 22, 23,000 engineers globally that really have the kind of in-depth knowledge of AI that's going to be necessary to make these systems successful. And I, mean, I think that may be, you know, a very conservative estimate. You know, I think there's probably a lot more engineers that have enough knowledge to be useful. But that's you know, when you're looking at the entire world, that's still a very limited pool of talent that everybody's fighting for. And, you know, there are estimates that in California, in, in Silicon Valley, um, AI engineers that are that have this kind of expertise are commanding salaries of anywhere from two hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars a year, which you know when I left engineering ten years ago would have been a phenomenal amount for a base you know a, a working level engineer to be able to command that kind of salary. For more about how automakers are protecting their patents and trade secrets, you can watch that entire discussion right now on Autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. And also be sure to check out our coverage of the NADA convention that's going on right now in Las Vegas. We'll be posting interviews from the annual car dealer show starting this afternoon on our website and YouTube channel. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.